Today, we're making the baddest project we've ever made. So guys, do us a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. We're really trying to build our channel and this whole algorithm thing is pretty difficult to figure out. So if you like what we're doing, do us a favor, hit that button. I've had this project in my head for about a year and haven't really figured out how to do it. But Rod and Angie Hall brought us a bunch of cedar and we used everything we had left for this particular project. And I gotta tell you guys, I am more proud of this project than anything I've ever made. Sorry, babe, even your hope chest. So just a disclaimer, guys. I don't want to say the G word because YouTube doesn't like that. But even if you're not into the same stuff that we're into, you can do this with anything. If you're not into the G word, maybe you can make one with like a Care Bear or unicorns or something like that. But the same process we used here will work for anything. So guys, I'll leave a link in the description below for all the stuff we used and we used a ton of tools. So here we go. We started out with a stack of three quarter inch cedar with multiple different widths, anything from like three and a half inches all the way pretty close to six inches. So we ripped this stuff down into one and three quarter inch strips. Now I would have liked to have done it a little thicker, but we had to make sure that we had enough cedar. We had to glue this up in three different sections because our planer is only 12 inches. So we glued two pieces and they both were able to fit in the planer. Now for this particular one, I got in a bit of a hurry and dad was a little disappointed in me. So this glue started to dry on me. I should have just waited for dad and had him help me spread the glue so it didn't start to dry. This one turned out to be a pretty big mess. One issue we had with this wood is that as I was cutting it down into the strips, sometimes it would actually break. So there was a lot of internal movement that I didn't anticipate. So these two pieces that we put together were not quite as straight as they should have been. However, that's what the planer's for and also a lot of sanding. Once the glue was dried, then we planed both pieces down. Now this originally was gonna be just a piece of art to hang on the wall, but we turned it into a table. So a little piece of advice, guys, plane both sides, even if the back is supposed to be covered, because you never know what your project could turn out to be. Once both sides were planed down, then we just glued them together to make this one solid board. And I gotta tell you, this cedar makes a beautiful piece of wood. So now I'm doing the inkjet transfer process. Now, if you guys haven't seen us do this, this takes quite a while, so I time-lapsed it, but we have an entire video focused just on this particular aspect of sign carving. You can check it out in the corner right up here, and I will also put a link in the description below so you can really get a good idea of what's going on here. I gotta say, we've done a lot of these transfers and this is probably one of the best ones that's ever turned out this good. I didn't have to attach any lines. I didn't really have to do anything once the transfer was on there. That worked out nice. The first bit we used is our profile bit at 3 16ths of an inch deep. Now, I know you guys have probably heard us say this before, but it's always a good idea to do the hardest parts first because the last thing you want to do is get a ton of work done and then you go to the really challenging parts and something happens. That's not ideal. So definitely the trigger was one of the hardest parts and then also the smaller areas and the Picatinny rail on the handguard. The Picatinny rail was a little bit challenging, but the bit was set at the perfect depth to where I didn't really have to go over anything. It was just in and out, nice and simple. Now I know somewhere out there, there's a big time G word guy that's saying something about this optic or that's not the right profile for the optic or that handguard's too big for that barrel. Gun guys are just nerds that like to argue about stuff. But 
This is the best I could do with what I could find on Google. Oh, it's time for an emergency reload. There we go. Now we're back in the fight. The next bit I'm using is our new 3 8 90 degree bit. Now this one's tricky because it cuts so much wider than I'm used to, I really, really took my time. The reason that I'm going around the edge with this bit is I want enough room for when I use the grinder and the cuts all disc to do the power carving. I don't want to have to get too close to this and just really screw up my carving. So I use this 3 8 90 to give it a much bigger profile, but I really had to take my time and keep this line as straight as possible without nicking my artwork. All right guys, so we got the outline done and we have a big line around it with our 3 8 90 degree bit to give me some room. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a freeform cloud around this thing and then power carve out to it. Now, I have no idea what kind of texture I wanna do. I know I'm probably gonna start out with the grinder and then move to the die grinder, but as always, I'm gonna carve the crap out of it till I think it looks good. Here we go. So it's a good idea to start out with pencil, which is what I did. And it took me three separate tries before I liked what I saw then I traced it with a Sharpie to make sure I could really see what I was doing. Now I started off with a medium coarse disc on the uh, grinder because I was thinking, well, this is cedar. I don't want to take too much off too fast. But the reality is there were some pretty hard spots even though it is cedar. And eventually I switched over to the extreme coarse disc. Now I wanted a very abrupt carve on this. I didn't want it to be gradual and I didn't want it to be smooth. So as I brought the grinder towards me, you could see that I really angled it up. I wanted it to almost look like this thing's exploding. And I think it does. I ended up not having to use the die grinder at all. I did all the power carving with just the regular angle grinder. And that was kind of what I was hoping for, but I didn't think it was gonna happen, especially in the sharp point areas, like where the mag meets the magwell, uh, underneath the trigger guard and stuff, because those get a little bit tight. But because this background is not gonna be colored, you don't really have to worry about high spots. I'm glad I waited till the power carving was done to cut the edges of the table. I just used a straight edge clamp and the flex circular saw to give me a nice straight cut. And I gotta tell you guys, this saw, I love this thing, man. It's heavy, but man, it cuts like nobody's business. Now, when I sanded it off, I didn't actually have to sand the actual image because that's gonna get painted anyway. But I was thinking, me and dad were talking about it, like maybe we won't paint it. So let's see what it looks like when it's all sanded off. And I'm glad I did, even though I ended up painting it. Now this part right here was not supposed to be on the actual board, but we had kind of a blank open area and I was like, you know what, something should go there. And this fit perfect. I carved this entire stencil with just the profile bit and made sure my lines were straight, made sure it was nice and evenly proportionate in that flat area. And I'm really glad I did. That definitely added something to the build. All right, guys, so this thing is completely carved. Now, the We the People stencil, that wasn't originally planned for this, but after I got it all carved, there was this big open space, and man, it just seemed to fit, and I think it really adds something to it. I am so freaking stoked about this thing. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually cut what we call Lexan and it's just a clear plastic. We're gonna cut this exactly to size and then we're gonna put some edges on the end to make sure that thing stays. This was originally just gonna be a piece of wall art, but personally, I like functional stuff, so we're making it a table. Let's get to work. 
So we were kicking around a few different ideas about the top of this table. At first we were talking about doing epoxy, but I felt like that would kind of take away from the depth. And then we talked about getting a piece of glass cut, but that is expensive. So this is a piece of plastic that dad had and we cut it to size. And then we use this router bit right here to make sure that it's really matched up with the size of the board. Now, I still had to do a little bit of edge sanding and a little bit of fine tuning to get this thing to fit exactly right. But for the most part, this worked out really well. I just had to take my time because I'd never used a bit like this before and we wanted to make sure we kept this thing clamped down solid on the board. Excuse the background on these scenes guys. We couldn't use the shop because that was being used for something else at this point And we just kind of worked with what we had So we measured cut and installed each one of these pieces individually with glue and brad nails We are far from finished carpenters or fine woodworkers So we kind of okie rigged this thing to put it together But the miters actually turned out pretty good for our skill level good old glue and sawdust. Now this sawdust came from all of the sawdust we had on the floor. So we wanted to make sure that it was sifted pretty good. That way we had fine dust in there to fill these gaps. And this worked really, really well. It's not perfect, but uh, nothing I make ever is. So I filled the gaps in the miters and I also filled the nail holes on the edge of the board and then used the random orbital just to sand it off get all of the straight edges off of there. I had rounded miters, I had rounded corners on the frame itself. I wanted it to have a super finished look. So I really took a lot of time and got a lot of this sanding done with the random orbital. Then I went back with the hand sander or just a piece of sandpaper and made sure everything was exactly the way I wanted. Now we played around with a few different finishes before we settled on a regular Rust-Oleum clear. And we decided on that for a few reasons. Number one, I already know how it's gonna look and I really didn't want to experiment with this project. Number two is because it dries really fast. So I was able to do all my finishing in one day. And number three, this is gonna be a coffee table. So we know for a fact, whoever uses it, whatever we do with it, it's gonna go inside. So I'm not worried about an outdoor finish. We ended up putting right around eight coats on the front and the back of this. And I love how it looks. One of my biggest regrets in life is that I didn't take art class in high school. I wish I was more artistic and I wish I could paint like some of you guys out there can. If that was in my wheelhouse of abilities, I had some great ideas of what I'd want to do with this. But seeing as how that's not my thing, I just painted it black. And I still think it came out great. I love it. But if I was a good painter, there's a lot of cool stuff I could have done with this. Now, we used our regular one shot and this took about an hour, hour and 10 minutes because I really did not want to have to have any cleanup on this. Remember guys, if you're going to paint, it's a good idea to do all your finishing first. That way, if you get drips where you don't want them, you spill your paint, God forbid, whatever, it's a lot easier to clean up on finished wood than it is on bare wood because it'll soak in. Now because this wasn't originally gonna be a table, we didn't have any table legs. So we stole some from mom and one of her tables. And it worked out. These are just hairpin legs you can get on Amazon for like 30 or 40 bucks. And they look pretty nice for this project. And they're super easy to put on and they're really, really stable. Oh, here we go, here we go. 
We took off the back layer and then put the piece of plastic in there. And I, this is the first time that I saw it. So you guys are kind of seeing it at the same time I saw it for the first time. And dude, I love this thing. So guys, this thing is awesome. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'd like to save it for when we get our new house in Arkansas, but the reality is that's just one more thing we gotta move. But I love it. I think it looks so freaking cool. So do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you think, good or bad. Is it just a hack job that I just kinda figured out or me and dad just figured out? Let us know what you guys think. All right, guys, if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com. And if you have anything negative to say, don't. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.